everyone, it's Maddie and V, and today we're going to be showing you the process of our final unhaul of 2018. So we did a couple of them throughout the year, but there were always books that we put back on the shelf, and this was finally the time to decide whether they deserve their place or not. Next to me here are five piles of books we have recently taken off our shelves, and we need to decide whether or not we want to keep them. We're currently going through a big library overhaul, reorganising our bookshelves, because we, we have to be honest with ourselves about whether we're actually going to read these, because if we don't think we will in the next year, because we are significantly reducing the amount of books that we're reading per year. Yeah. So this is probably reading for an entire year. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at them. Yeah, yeah. Is there a possibility that you'll read it next year? No, get rid of it. Yes, let's keep it. I think then we just need to go with gut reaction rather than pros and consing because yeah, okay. otherwise it's going to take ages to do that for every book. I say yes to that one just because I've heard a lot of positive energy about it. Um, we've got Adam Silvera here and then History is All You Left to Me as well. Get rid of, keep, maybe. Keep. No, neither of us have read this one. With this one it was the first book I chose for a read all day that never got published because I just couldn't finish it. I got 80 pages until the end and I thought I'm gonna DNF this even though I've got so far through I literally cannot be bothered to put the effort into finding out what happens and I just don't really have any positive attachment to the story. This is on a scale of 1 to 10 by Stephen Scott and I accepted this to review from Chicken House and I was interested in it because the author wrote it entirely on her phone whilst she was in some sort of mental facility getting treatment. My gut reaction is to say oh gosh that's an uncomfortable subject like I don't want to read it but then the same can be said of Paperweight which is one of our absolute favourites and this is set in like a rehab camp for people with eating disorders so I've got to like go in with a positive mind and hope this is going to give like the same vibe and tone as this. I'm going to keep but I'm going to put it on the try pile. Yalk so keeping. Then we have this one which has to be Maddie's decision because you've read the first one. Yeah I thought it was a really cute read, I love the hobbies, I love the clubs and it took me back to exactly the books I was reading when I was 12 years old so I'm going to keep this one. Next one is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. I had this on my very first try chapter which was probably now over a year ago and still haven't read it. I love Cinderella, she's my favourite fairy tale and yet I haven't been drawn to this. The other con books that we've read we haven't super enjoyed so maybe I'm just going to put this one on the try pile. Is there like a middle pile <laughs> where you're like try maybe and then definitely no? <laughs> Incarnate by Jodie Meadows was one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR and I finally allowed myself to buy it this year so this is one I'm keeping. This is another Yalk one which I'm really interested in so keeping that one. Same goes for this one. This is Witch's Pyre by Josephine Angelini and I read the first book in this series. This is the third one. We don't own the second one physically. I think I'm going to unhaul this because I read the first one and I was like, me like three years ago would have kept reading anyway but I just, I don't think I have the time to. So I'm going to say goodbye to this one and let me grab Trial by Fire now to get rid of two. This is a strong decision. The right one. Yes. <laughs> I admire your strength. Yelk keeping. Yelk keeping. That's the Yelk one as well. Um, <laughs> Did right, that so, so quickly. Got this pile is growing. This. this is Here We Are Now by Jasmine Waga. Um, I have her first book, which I think is My Heart and Her Black Holes, on my Kindle and I meant to do them for a reading double. So this is about a girl whose um, father, I think, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it's just Little Darlings but the YA version. Um, I haven't read her writing so I don't feel like I can strongly say yes or no to it. I'll probably put it on the read pile because if I don't get on with her writing then I'll just say goodbye to it I suppose. Yeah. This one we bought super recently as you can tell because we've still got the sticker on it from the works. This is the sequel to It's Not Me It's You. It's a companion story by Stephanie Kate Strome. She was such a lovely author to meet. I had a great reading experience with the first one so definitely keeping this one. What are we up to now? Oh, this one. I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul this one. It, it survived been... too many. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's been bopping back and forth between being off the shelf and on the shelf and it's finally time to commit to being off. What else have we got here? Okay, this this is a Yalk story. We absolutely love Jessica Spotswood. I probably the one I'm most, yeah, yeah most excited for. can't wait to read another story by her, so straight on that pile. Can Good. you do I like guess... a quick fire round? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing goes with oh, uh, Wild Blue Wonder. This is It's a Wrap, the third book in the Waiting for Callback series. It's an author duo that I really admire. I've read the other two books, so why not finish it? Those are all Yalk. Yeah, these are Yalk ones. This is what the subsection is looking like now. So we've managed to unhaul four books. Fur is a book that once again I picked up years ago and I meant to read it this Halloween but I didn't really have time to read anything on Halloween. Is mm. it signed? Yeah, to Maddie and B best wishes. Okay, well I guess we have to keep it then. It hasn't really stopped us before getting rid of books that we have signed. But that's mm. the thing with getting books signed when you haven't read them because it just gives you it's this a bad idea, attachment to them that you're not really sure is deserved yet. It sounded really atmospheric when the yeah. author was describing it so I don't know how to feel. Next we have The Price Guide to the Occult by Leslie Walton. This is the same author that did Ava Lavender. She's practically been underground since then but this book hits a lot of bees buzzwords so it's going straight on the S file. What about The Lion Game then by Sarah Shepherd? I don't know because 
I really like Sarah Shepherd books. Be aware that we bought this in a charity shop for like 59p. <laughs> yeah, so I shouldn't really have that much attachment to it. And I think it's a really long series. I think there are maybe, gosh, eight books perhaps to this. Yeah. I don't know, Sarah Shepherd books are always ridiculously long in a series form. So maybe I should just get rid of this uh, because I've already enjoyed Amateurs and... Um, the Perfectionist, so maybe I don't need another one. You can put it on the maybe pile for now if you want. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know because it's a lot to invest in. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that it's just going to be predictable to her stuff and I don't think it's going to change my world, so I should just put it on this pile and get rid of it. It was only 60p. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Final Girls by Riley Seager and I bought this because of some booktube hype, so I'm going to put this on the you better read it otherwise it's going. Um, so that belongs there. Nowhere Girls I saw a lot of hype for and got it for 99p, so on the yes pile. The Disappearances is one of the only like sister thrillers that we haven't read. Is it sisters or is it missing? But this is one of the only thrillers on our shelves that we haven't read and we're always looking for more, so it's Seems silly to get rid of it when it's one of our favourite genres. Okay, so Codename Verity is one of those like YA classics that I haven't read and desperately want to, so that's going up here. We have made it to Undone by Cat Clark. I was wondering when this was going to come up. I just don't think it's feasible for me to read a 500 page thriller. I did Whisper to Me and it was so desperately uncomfortable to read and this is the story of Jem whose best friend Kai kills himself and he was gay and she was in love with him and I'm just I'm not really into that problematic storyline. I've got a lot of her other know. books on Kindle so I think we should just buy it on Kindle if we want if it. We want to, yeah. They've redone the covers since, so yeah. I, I think I'm pretty sure if you go on Goodreads, you will find a good review of it. But that's that's not the point. It's like our own things, and I want to stop relying on Goodreads and what other people say about books to dictate whether or not I'm going to read them. We've got Beauty Queens. Did you want to keep that? Probably. It's like another classic, isn't it? Yeah. That's our Jacobi series, which again we got at Yelk, so we're keeping that. Yep. Obviously, we have these two Emery Lords, and we love her books so we were going to do a readathon over the summer but again it was just one of those things where we lost the time to do it so that has to be saved till later super looking forward to those sky is everywhere by jadie nelson i read i'll give you the sun when we went to germany last year and i absolutely adored the writing style and this one's a lot shorter but again it's one of those ones that we've like put off reading for ages and ages it, it's not one that we're going to get rid of because we bought it in paperback for a reason to try and encourage ourselves to read it so this one has to stay yeah i think it's one of the books that's been on my kindle for the longest time um uh, is that a keep pile? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, this is Sunkiss by Jenny McClellan, and we got this from the Amazon Used a New Marketplace. Um, if you want to grab Flirty Dancing. Yeah, these are the other Jenny books that we own. I absolutely love Stargazing for Beginners. I gave it five stars. This one's a four star read. I read this one and it did not make the same impact on me. We bought this and it's the fourth one in the series, though they're all companions, so I assume you could read it on its own. Um, but we just didn't get number two and three because they weren't as cheap as the others on Used and New. And it just seems silly because I'm, I'm probably not going to read them now. Yeah. Um, and she's definitely taken a turn in the tone of her writing. So I'm more looking forward to what she has coming next rather than reading her backlist so I think we should get rid of both of these. Yeah exactly. Those are solid keeps. Yeah exactly I, I love these books and I'm, I'm really pleased that an author has evolved in the right way for me. This one's new, this one's new, this one's new so they're all being kept um, and that leaves the last one of this pile How Not to Disappear by Claire Furness which get is rid of it. Shield. Get rid of it. <laughs> this is a book that I had on a read or on haul video that we were going to do and then again it's another one that we just didn't have time for and honestly I just didn't want to commit to books that I didn't feel absolutely 100% invested in. When did that come out by the way because I swear we got it in the year that it came out. It's been on the shelf for over two years and I'm just not going to read it. This one we picked up at Yelp last year for the um the trades thing and we got it signed obviously i would prefer to have it in a cover and version that isn't like this awkward um as this proof but i guess we'll read it and then if we really like it we can always get a different edition then we've got these historical ones um i'm more interested in this one than this one um really i would have said the other way around i thought you'd be more interested in the double shadow i mean this is about a girl that goes missing and then boy like goes to find her so I don't I should find out whether it's actually like um I think it's in third person and it's like mostly about a boy I don't know whether to get rid of this one to be honest this one I think was just a victim of booktube hype after the salt of the sea I felt mm. like we just had to have it so I have no interest in reading it I think it's just going to be another one of those really depressing ones like mother tongue by mm. Julie Mayhew where it's like oh I'm really interested in this period and because it's not something that people are really writing about but then you read it and it's just so gut-wrenching. I don't always, I don't really read for that. So let's just put it in the no. Okay. 
These three books are definitely ones that we're keeping. These two we bought recently and this one we bought when we met the Schwab. There's also a sequel now <laughs> which we have to jump on board to because a lot of people say that this is their favourite book of hers. I'm probably not going to read the sequel though from what I've heard about it. It just doesn't stand up apparently well, to Vicious. So it's been quite a while. It was if quite I read a while it, I just between read that the books, one. isn't it? So yeah. you probably could just I would read just, this yeah. one. It's funny how a lot of our historical books <laughs> Oh, I'm read. Because I desperately wanted to be the person that reached for historical because the historical books I have read, I have really enjoyed. I know, I know, that's why um, it feels difficult to like get rid of this one because it's like, what mm. if? I'm gonna say now that I'm gonna get rid of Victoria because it was fun read, but I love the TV show and this covers the first four episodes. I like the TV show and if I just wanna rediscover the story then I can watch that, so I'll probably just get rid of this one. What about this one? This is another charity shop one that we bought at the same time as The Lion Game, really cheap. I don't really care but then if it's an ace protagonist then I just feel like I should be reading it because mm. of that. Now we're down to the very bottom. I, I can't believe it's been this long like we got it quite soon after it came out and I just haven't picked it up. Hype scares I, me. I, yeah honestly I don't know if I need to see the movie first if that will then encourage me to read the book or there's just something about it. I really want to love it but like you said I think it's because it's loved by so many people that I'm just scared that I won't have the same reaction although I'm sure I will so. Okay so then we have just these three left um, the only one I'm not sure about is Red Ink, the one in the middle. Julie Mayhew is an interesting writer. I have enjoyed the things I've read by her, but just like some of these other books, they just haven't really made an impact on me. And I like what she's doing, that it's slightly different from normal young adult, but this just feels like the kind of story that won't make me happy. It's one of those ones that I would read it to say that I've read it. Yeah, the little buzzwords for it are emotional, dark, witty, and rite of passage. Yeah, I, I think I think we, we should, should get, get rid of this it. one. Okay. So within this mess of books, Books. Here is what we had from the things we hadn't read and then we've just got an equally large pile of books that we have read. We can be really ruthless when we want to be. I have The Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hale. This is a fairy tale retelling of a story that I wasn't very familiar with. I really enjoyed it and I can still kind of remember the story. This is clinging to the time where fairy tale retellings were my favourite genre when really it's only The Lunar Chronicles that stands out to me. The first one on my list is Optimists Die First by Susan Nielsen. It was a fun story that I enjoyed when I read it at the time but it's not one that I can see myself rereading. I have she, Myself and I by Emma Young, all about a brain transplant. A fun read, but again, one I can't see myself ever going back to. Next is Birdie by Jess Valance. This is one of the first YA thrillers that I read actually, and I found it really captivating. I enjoyed the twist ending, but then I soon realised that that twist ending is pretty common in a lot of other YA thrillers. <laughs> a second copy of Beautiful Broken Things I Don't Need. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, which has somehow managed to survive on our shelves for so many years just because it felt like an iconic piece of YA. Next is Whisper to Me by Nick Lake, and this is hard to get rid of because it's such a beautiful cover but also incredibly easy because it was such an uncomfortable read and I pretty much hated it. Then we have Unveiling Venus by Sophia Bennett. This is the sequel to Following Ophelia and while I have enjoyed the series so far I have this on my Kindle and I really enjoyed reading them there. Actually I had a way more enjoyable experience reading the audio version so having a physical book is just cluttery. Next is Blackbird by N.T. Gomez. I read this and enjoyed it during a read all day but again thrillers have to be something really special for me to actually think of keeping them because they're not really something you could read more than once. And then we have The Bombs That Brought Us Together by Brian Conahan. I read this for a read all day. I really liked the story. It was slightly out of my comfort zone and something really different, but it didn't, but it doesn't actually feel authentic to the collection that I want to keep, so I'm going to pass it on. And lastly, we have The Moonlight Dreamers by Siobhan Curran, which I desperately wanted to like. It has a lot of things that you would think I would like about it. It did some things a little bit problematically for me, and there is a sequel which I have no interest in reading, so I'm happy to give this one up. So this is a picture of all of the books we ended up getting rid of. I can't remember how many it was exactly. And the best bit is they are already completely out of our hands as soon as we took them off the shelves. We bundled them into bags and took them to our local charity shops, dispersed them through so that new readers could discover them. This was always a mistake that we made in previous unhauls when the books would just sit in bags actually in the library so that we'd be really tempted to just undo all our progress and take them out and put them back on our shelves. Thank you everyone so much for watching. We post bookish videos every Sunday. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Maddie and B. Those links are always in the description. We'll see you next time. <laughs>